So today we're going to be algebraically determining the solution to systems of equations again and graphically finding the solutions to those systems as well. Um, so you remember that when we're doing these, we're going to use substitution in order to solve. And also remember that when you have a quadratic formula or an x squared term, you can solve by factoring, you can solve by completing the square. If you can't do either of those, you can also go back to solving by using the quadratic formula that um, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So don't forget that that's also an option if you need it. Then once we find those x values, we need to also make sure we plug them back in and find the y values for the system. Because remember, the roots in these cases would not be your solution to the system. That's just where, if it was an equation, it would cross the x-axis. So we have to make sure we do all of that and be very meticulous in solving. I'm going to do numbers 1, 2, and then 5 and 6 with you. You're on your own for the other ones. All right, so for number 1, using substitution, I know that y can be replaced with this y here. So I'm going to write x plus 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 8 equals 6. So now I go ahead and distribute the 2, x plus 2x squared minus 10x plus 16 equals 6. Now I'm going to combine like terms. So 2x squared, x minus 10x is negative 9x plus 16 equals 6. And now I'm going to set it equal to 0. So 2x squared minus 9x, if I subtract 6, I get plus 10 equals 0. So I would always prefer to use the factoring method if possible. So in this case, I can't factor anything out. So I'm going to jump right into doing my grouping. 2 times 10 is 20. And my factors of 20 that have a sum of negative 9 would be negative 4 and negative 5. So now I'm going to group. We have 2x squared minus 4x minus 5x plus 10 equals 0. So 2x can be factored out of my first grouping, and I get x minus 2. And negative 5 can be factored out of my second, which gives me, again, x minus 2. So I have 2x minus 5 equals zero, or as one of my factors, and x minus 2 as my other factor. So if 2x minus 5 equals 0, I get... 5 over 2, because I would add 5 and then divide by 2, so it's x equals 2.5. And if x minus 2 equals 0, then x equals positive 2. All right, so again, those are just the x values where these two equations would have solutions. So now I'm going to plug those x values in and solve for y. So I'm going to use the second equation to do that. So I get... 2.5 plus 2y equals 6 minus 2.5. 2y equals 3.5. Divide by 2. And y equals 1.75. So one of my solutions is 2.5, 1.75. Then if I plug in just the 2, 2 plus 2y equals 6 minus 2. 2y equals 4, divide by 2, and y equals 2 again. So my other solution would be 2, 2. And I could also verify this by pulling up my calculator and putting those equations in to make sure that those are where they really do cross. All right, number 2. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. But now notice that my x isn't really in the equation, or my y isn't really in the second equation. So now when I go and do my substitution, I'm just going to set the two equations equal to each other. So I have x squared plus 6x minus 8 equals 9x plus 2. Subtracting the 9x, I get negative 3x. And subtracting 2, I get negative 10 equals 0. So I can go right into factoring, and my factors of negative 10 that have a sum of negative 3 would be negative 5 and positive 2. So I have x squared minus 5x plus 
2x minus 10 equals 0. So that's x times x minus 5 plus 2 times x minus 5 equals 0. So I have x plus 2 times x minus 5 equals 0. So either x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. So x is either negative 2 or x is positive 5. All right, so again, those are just my x values. I now need to plug those in to find the y values for the solution. So if I do that, I get, if I'm plugging in the second one to make my life easier, y equals 9 times negative 2 plus 2. So y equals negative 18 plus 2. So y equals negative 16. So one of my solutions is negative 2, negative 16. Then the second one, y equals 9 times 5 plus 2, which is 45 plus 2, which is 47. So my second solution is positive 5 and 47. Okay, so you're on your own for doing the algebra for the next two. Be very careful. Take your time so you don't make any silly mistakes. All right, then looking at the graphs for 5 and 6, Again, we're going to need our calculator here to make our lives a little bit easier. So taking a look at the first one, I can do y equals x plus 2 very easily. So we're going to start at positive 2 and go up 1 over 1 or down 1 left 1. And we're going to draw a solid line through those points. We're not doing inequalities anymore. Arrows on both ends. Label it with the equation. Then for the second equation, obviously, I want to use my calculator. So we have y equals. We clear what's there. x squared plus x minus 2 pull up our table. Now, if you remember in a previous lesson, I had it set up by 50s. So I have to go to table set and change by 1 instead of 50, pull my graph back up, and I can graph all those points. And we see that the turning point is going to be in between the 0 and negative 1 because of this negative 2 and negative 2. So I want to graph a couple points on both ends. I can't graph negative 4. Oh, I can graph. Can I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I can't graph negative 4 and positive 10, but I can graph negative 3, 4. So we go left 3, up 4. Then negative 2, 0. And that's one of our solutions. Negative 1, negative 2. 0, negative 2. 1, 0, and 2, 4. So there's another solution there. So I'm going to draw that line. Now keep in mind, because our vertex was not given, I know it's not going to be flat right here. There's going to be a little dip. So make that dip, arrows on both ends, and label it with the equation. Okay, so our solutions in this case are these two points here. So we have an, a solution at negative 2, 0, and a solution at 2, 4. Okay, not so bad to do. All right, number 7 is very similar. We start with the graph 3x plus 4, so we're going to start at 4. Now, this has a positive slope of 3. I can't go up 3 and over 1, though, so I'm going to go down 3 and left 1 and draw my line. Arrows on both ends and label it with the equation. Then I'm going to go over to my calculator and put in my quadratic, which is the negative x squared plus 4, and pull up that table. And again, because it's quadratic, I want to look for my vertex, which is very clear that it's 0, 4, because the 4 is squished in between the two 3s. So I'm going to graph negative 3, negative 5. which is one of my solutions. Then negative 2, 0. 
negative 1, 3, 0, 4, which is another one of my solutions, 1, 3, 2, 0, and 3, negative 5, which is a negative parabola. Because of the negative out front, it's going downhill on both sides, labeling that with the equation. And now I see my two solutions are this one and this one. So my solutions are negative 3, 5, or negative 3, negative 5, rather, and 0, 4. Okay, so you're on your own with the last two as well. Make sure you're answering your questions on Go Formative as you go um, and start your homework when you're completely done.